Hi guys, it's Willow here, and it is time for another rousing edition of Plutonic Punk Garden Update! Yeah, I know. These videos are, they've been called compelling in the past, and sure that was a sarcastic review from my sister, but um, you know, I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna let a little sarcasm dampen my gardening spirit, I'm gonna tell you. Um, the last time I showed off my fabulous garden beds was in my March Against Bear Monsanto video in uh, on May 19th, I believe that, that um, March was, and there wasn't much action going on. There were a few volunteers sticking their heads up, there were a few perennials that were starting to grow, but um, basically I have some, some fairly substantial action to show you guys. The year started off very slowly, I'm not sure exactly why, um, but everything is a little bit behind where it was last year uh, but it's coming along it's coming along we've had really weird weather up and down up and down cold hot um, we just went through a hot snap um, 38 degree temperatures which is quite hot for canada that's uh quite toasty that's like 1980s heat 1980s drought stricken grasshopper ridden prairie heat is what is what that heat is uh, and I'm, you know, I'm not much of a heat girl. I'm more of a, I like it to be sunny, but I don't like to be out in the blazing sun too long or at all. So I generally do my gardening early, early in the morning between like 6.30 a.m. and 8, 8.30, um, if I can help it. Um, so anyway, um, without further ado, I will not uh, continue blabbing on about the, uh, the, the situation. I will show you the actual uh, situation and the veggies of my labor. Now, this is the. Oh, I really need to get better with this focusing action, guys. This is the raised bed. Now, I also. Oops, sorry. Again, I was covering the the microphone. There's a real there's a real flaw in this camera because where you where you would naturally put your thumb is the microphone. Okay, so I said earlier that bok choy was the easiest green to grow. I'm, that was a little preemptive. Um, so last year, it grew like gangbusters. It grew super early in the year, and it got really big, uh, really fast. Um, and I had plentiful bok choy. But this year has been different. And I think because we had, we had heat, hot weather early on. See, this is the bok choy right here, this, this row. And it's not looking super great. It's okay. It's kind of gotten medium size. See, there's a bunch that's kind of not really growing well at all there. Some medium size, um, some medium size stuff. Bok choy is not a hot weather loving plant, much like me. So as soon as it starts getting hot, it starts to bolt. And I mentioned that last year in the video as well, that it'll start to grow. Uh, let's see if I can find one. Yes, these little stalks here and you basically have to keep pulling these off. Otherwise, it'll go bitter and you will not want to eat the plants. There's another one right there. Gets these little flowers on them as well, you can see. Um, so basically on an, you know, every other day basis, you have to be, you know, sort of ripping these stems off the bok choy in order to keep it not bitter. So it's a bit labor intensive and I'm not sure if I'm going to grow it last, grow it again next year. I really thought that it was, you know, this mir sort of miracle plant that it was, that would just grow like crazy, but that was just I kind of lucking out last year. Um, so it hasn't been super plentiful, but I mean, I still have a fair amount of bok choy on there. Now this, the next row beside it is, um, Swiss chard and I've already, harvested and done one blanching and freezing session for the winter so it's looking maybe a, a hair puny at this time but it, it has been um, doing actually quite well chard is much hardier a much hardier plant i that's why I, that one of the reasons i love it it's delicious uh, i usually eat it steamed or in stir fries but you can also you can do a number of different things with it you can put it in sauces you can um, you can put it, you can use it as a salad green, uh, beef up your salad. Um, this is Ford hook chard, which is kind of a white stalk and um, pale green leaf. And it's, it always seems to be the fastest growing variety, just FYI for you 
charred people out there. Um, it withstands the heat. It grows all year. This will grow. This will even withstand a uh, uh, light freeze. So it'll grow here. It'll grow um, into kind of October. So it's a cut and come again plant. So you just basically cut the big leaves. You cut the big outer guys, and uh, these are a little bit too small to cut right now. But um, they're in, in, within a few days. I'll probably have another blanching and freezing session to go. Um, and this is rhubarb chard. And it always grows, it seems to anyway, grows a little bit slower than the Ford Hook. It has red stalks and uh, the flavor is just slightly different, not, not too much different. But this uh, rhubarb chard is coming along fairly nicely as well. Um, and these plants will get, they'll get big and bushy. Um, so it, look, does, it looks fairly sparse. And then this is my carrot row. And carrots are, this is the first year that I've ever grown carrots. So I'm kind of excited about that. I heard that they do well in sandy soil and this soil that I have in this, top, in this raised bed is quite sandy. So I thought, hey, let's just, let's just throw some carrots in there and see what they do. So um, I will hopefully have some nice carrots out of there. And then in this corner we have a lettuce volunteer. So from last year, I didn't plant this this year. The seed just uh, germinated this year and he's coming up. I'm a little bit nervous about my, about my lettuce because of the heat. Um, and then this, so we're a little bit in shadow. Hopefully I can show you guys what's going on here. Um, this is the, sorry. Get this. This is the, um, the hedge bed and it's all nicely filled in here. We'll go down a little bit lower. This is basil that has just kind of started to burst into growth, which is good. The basil has also been a little bit, a um, little bit low. Then in the front layer, I have this beautiful row of red onions um, and they're growing really nicely. Um, I've been eating the tops of the onions for probably a good month now. So that's been good. Then I have, finally, I have some lettuce going on. Um, the lettuce was really, is, has been really slow this year as well. Um, but finally, it's starting to grow. And there's a loose leaf variety. So this is a red, red leaf, excuse me, Mr. Onion, red loose leaf variety. Um, that's growing here. And then for the first time, I am also growing, um, um, sorry, romaine. Ooh, don't topple over. Romaine lettuce as well. Uh, that's kind of exciting because apparently it does better in the, in the weather, in the heat. And as I said, we've been having, I'm going to check this lettuce. Let's see. Nope. It's not better yet. So as long as we don't get too much scor more scorching heat, that lettuce might survive. Now this, and take a little wider shot here. This is um, a row of beets in the back and a row of chard in the front. And then of course my row of beautiful onions in the very front. As I go along, we switch from beets to kale dark green kale in this back row and then more more chard. <laughs> I'm in love with chard so I like to have enough for the whole summer and fall and then also to enough to put away um, until I can get to the next year hopefully right I usually don't make it quite that far but um, I like to have enough to pretty much last me as much of the year as possible and this this stuff's looking you know really nice actually it's it's um Again, I've already I've already harvested one harvesting of chard uh, chard out of here, uh, so I have I have some in my freezer for the winter, um, and I've also taken off some kale as well just to eat. But this stuff is uh, there's actually I think two or three different varieties of kale planted in here, and kale is it's also a cool weather crop. Kale and chard are both cool weather crops, but they don't go bitter in the hot weather. So that's the really nice thing about them. Whereas lettuce and bok choy, um, 
what else? Maybe uh, arugula, things like that. They'll go bitter in hot weather. So lettuce is somewhat dicey to grow. Like you can get some early in the year, but then again, mine didn't grow fast this year. So I didn't get any earlier in the spring or sort of in the late spring would be normally when you'd start getting it. I didn't get that. So um, I'm just kind of hoping that it'll survive this, this hot weather that we're having. And as I come along, um, there's some rhubarb chard there. There is a lettuce patch, and this is my romaine, romaine lettuce. Exciting, exciting times. Uh, because again, and I'm sorry if this is not focused because the sun is in my eyes, and I cannot exactly tell. But the romaine is um, coming along as well. Um, and then there's a little bit of loose leaf back in there as well. So this is nice and I'm hoping, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test this as well. Is this, is this better? No, it's still tasting good. So yay, so far so good. Um, now I will say that um, shopping at the farmer's market is always the most humbling thing in the world because when you're an actual farmer and you have, you know, access to a ton of compost and access to a ton of manure and you know just access to all the things that farmers have access to uh, greenhouses and you know cold frames and all, all that type of stuff you know <laughs> there's no comparison right uh their lettuces are like monstrous already their kale and chard are monstrous already they're already growing you know um vegetables that are mine are not even close to being ready uh, but with you know I live in the city I don't have access to a ton of compost or really any compost other than direct trench composting at this point um, you know I I do get some manure but it's expensive and kind of a hassle so I don't uh, you know I don't have a huge amount there but uh, basically, if you have patience, this stuff will grow and it'll provide food for you. So that's that's basically all I really care about. I don't really care about. There's a lot of um, I found a lot of competitiveness with with gardeners um, about their gardens and how well things are growing and stuff. But eh, like who cares really? You know, as long as you're getting your food, that's all that really matters. Uh, now we have next to these guys, we have a couple of zucchini plants. These are second plant plants so they're a little bit smaller but they have honestly just exploded in growth they were uh, quite tiny even a week ago so and as you can see they're starting to flower hooray so that is a male flower um, with the kind of stamen and then here are two more uh, zucchini plants these uh, this one's definitely further along than than the other guys. These two were both actually planted at the same time, but this one has grown a little bit slower than this guy. And an exciting development to show you guys is my first, oops, first, oh jeez. I don't know if this is in focus, you guys, but my first zucchini of the year. Hooray, hurrah! He's almost ready. He's almost ready to go. So that's exciting, uh, but I will say that I had I had my first zucchini, I believe, July 9th last year, and it is July 18th today, and I'm just about gonna be a couple more days, and that guy will be ready to come. So yeah, everything's just a little bit slow for some reason. Now on this tail end, we have cucumber plants, and there are four cucumber plants here, and they will all sort of um, spread out and do their thing. Um, I will maybe try to get one to climb up the hedge and see if that'll see if that'll work. Um, and these guys also, I don't think I have any ready to come, but we have a lot of flowers. You can see the, the flowering action here. Um, and so of course the, the um, bees will pollinate those guys. I've also been hand pollinating the the zucchinis already just to help the bees out a little bit because they sometimes you know it just sometimes doesn't happen but anyway um, overall this garden is looking pretty good pretty good I have to say it's quite green quite lush again the lettuce has taken a little bit of extra time to get going but uh, 
But overall, we've got a garden here, friends. Okay, and now we are back at the community garden. I have two beds here at the community garden because I just don't have quite enough space going on at my at my apartment. And um, last year I kind of did a mixed bed in here just to kind of see what would grow. It was my first year gardening in this new province that I'm living in, British Columbia, and I didn't quite know. So I had some actually pretty great success with my broccoli, but the plants got so monstrous and took up so much space and you really only get a fairly small harvest for the amount of space that the plant takes up. You know, you really only get one little head of broccoli off of each gigantic plant. So considering my space, um, you know, requirements here, uh, this might look like a lot of space, but when you're trying to put food away for the entire year, it's not that much space. So what I've d done in this bed is just kale and chard. That's it. So the back rows there are, there's two rows of kale in that back area. Do a little close-up action. The sun's probably a little glary here, but... So those are getting, uh, you know, getting biggish. And then this front row, these front two rows are charred. And again, the Ford hook has grown quite quickly. You can see these guys are coming on strong. And the rhubarb has grown a little less quickly, but it's coming along as well. Um, I was a little bit n nervous about these beds because they it just seemed like they were not growing very quickly at all. But they've started to kick into, ge into gear. And it'll be honestly even amazing to see the growth in even a week's time. This will be, you know, it'll be overflowing with greenery in a week's time. Um, because July is usually a a pretty great month for for things to explode into garden goodness. So this these two beds or this bed is actually all for the winter. So basically I'm not going to eat I'm going to eat the um, the chard and I won't even have to eat all of the chard um, and kale from my apartment beds and this whole bed I'm just going to blanch and freeze. So I'm hoping to have a freezer stocked full of delicious organic greens that I grew myself and did not have to pay a delicious organic greens prices for at the grocery store. So that's pretty fantastic. And then in the corner here I have my strawberry plant which has branched out quite nicely and I see it has some runners uh, branching out again. So I'm gonna have even more babies, more baby uh, strawberry plants next year. And um, it produces, you know, just kind of a handful of berries, but still nice to have. Then here we have, um, our, this is all arugula along here, and it's starting, this I, I started in, uh, in May, and you can see it's starting to bolt in the heat. We had 38 degrees, as I mentioned yesterday. Oh, let's get a little more focused here. So what you do is you just pull these bad boys off. You pull these Bolton stems off and you pull these flowers off and uh, it helps stop the arugula from going bitter because just like lettuce and just like bok choy, arugula is a, um, a cool weather plant and it doesn't, it does not love the heat. Now uh, in the front here I have a few little carrots, got a little gap there but that's okay. Uh, planted just again. It's kind of an experiment and in the middle. This is another little Zone that was a bit of a concern to me um, This is beets grown in here and this this is two or even maybe even three plantings of beets They did not germinate very well and did not come up very well um, And for the longest time they just were absolutely not growing I mean they I just thought well are you gonna do anything you guys, but as you can see They're starting to come along here you know, see there's a bunch of little guys right there. So it looks really tiny, but um, you know, beets are the kind of thing that, you know, you can harvest them, oops, you can harvest them in the fall and you can just kind of let them grow. So I'm hoping by the fall, these bad boys are gonna be kicking into gear. Uh, beside this is a second planting of arugula. So because arugula goes kind of nasty in the hot weather, you can plant, you can do succession planting. You're also supposed to do that with, um, with uh, lettuce. 
which I, I did as well, um, just so that it's growing in cycles so that you always kind of have some fresh stuff. And as long as it can, you know, as long as we don't have miserably hot weather, um, this stuff will be good. You can see, little arugula. Arugula is very tasty in salads. Mm-mm. It's got kind of like a, kind of like a strong, almost like nutty flavor. Um, I didn't actually even know what arugula was. I finally just found out. I was like, what is that delicious flavor in this, in these salad greens? And then I found out it was arugula. And I also found out it's called salad rocket. And when I found out that, I was like, oh, I need to, I need to grow some of this because salad rocket is probably the coolest name I've heard for a green ever. And then beside that, we have a potato patch. Hooray. Now, I will say, that these plants don't look the best, but the there are potatoes underneath them, <laughs> and they're pretty decently sized. Oh, you can actually see. Um, you can see them growing here. I don't know if you can actually see that, you guys, but there's, and you actually are supposed to keep them covered, because otherwise they'll go green, and apparently green potatoes are toxic. Which I always used to eat the green potato chip that um, you know you'd get every once in a while in a bag of chips. Apparently, you're not supposed to do that. So far, I've survived, but don't do that. Don't eat green potatoes, guys. Um, so the other thing that's happening is these plants are dying, and that is normal for potato plants. They do eventually die, but usually the plants get like really big and green and lush, and um, they don't start dying probably I would say until like maybe later in August ish um, But these guys are it's the middle of it's late late July Heading into late July and these guys are already starting to wilt and die off So I don't know what my potato harvest is gonna be again. This is my first year growing See these guys look pretty good. These these three are looking pretty good and Green and not too bad. They should be bigger than this still, but they're not um, so it might be a soil issue. I didn't get any manure in here and um, we didn't we didn't have any manure at the community garden this year so I Will hopefully get some in in the fall um, That might be what's going on hard to say but honestly It's just a lot of fun because it reminds me of the potato patch on my family farm when I was growing up we always had a big family potato patch um, and my dad and my grandpa would kind of ramrod the the patch but then my mom and my sister and I my aunt and uncle and cousins would all um, would all chip in and help to plant it and also to harvest it we'd we'd um, harvest it into those big uh, gunny sacks and then my dad would come along my big strong rancher dad would come along and and toss the gunny sacks into the back of the pickup truck and uh, then we would have potatoes for the whole family for you know for the winter and um, you know I was I was kind of a TV riddled you know lazy kind of kid at times um, and I didn't always love doing that potato patch but looking back that was a, you know those were great times with my family and you know great times just getting outside and growing some potatoes growing some spuds so I'm excited to honestly just eat some potatoes that I've grown myself that's literally it so even if it's not the greatest harvest I imagine the potatoes are gonna be quite small because the plants have been quite small um, but it, it's a mystery you guys I'll, I'll maybe I'll try to do an update video because I know it'll be it'll be you'll just be itching to know how what are the size of Willis potatoes how did the potato crop come out because um, yeah it's it's exciting times so anyway yes we have potatoes we have arugula we have beets we have kale and chard and strawberries. Uh, strawberries are done for the year, obviously, but um, uh, it's looking on pace to give me a substantial amount of greens for the freezer for the winter, and I'm a happy girl. Anyway, you guys, I hope you have enjoyed that truly scintillating status report on my garden of 2018. Things are coming along quite nicely, quite nicely. Uh, but I have to say it's about 8.30 a.m. and the sun is already too hot for my liking, so I'm going inside. <laughs>